Crafting has been an important part of MapleStory since forever, and many players often look towards this for the most basic of needs. What's up guys, my name is Waffles, and today we're going to be taking a look at professions in MapleStory. Professions are a big part of the game, and many players see themselves spending quite a significant amount of time and resources here for different reasons. We're going to be taking a closer look at professions, what makes them so useful, and what each profession can do to assist with your journey in MapleStory. So, when you hit level 35 on any character, you will gain access to a place called Ardent Mill. This place is the home of Profession, MapleStory's crafting system. To get here, there should be a portal in most towns in Maple World. You can also use the Profession window to teleport to the area, or even use the Quick Move function in the top left. Welcome to Ardent Mill. This place is home to five different artisans that practice five different professions. There are two harvesting professions that you will be able to learn, which are mining and herbalism. Additionally, you will be able to learn one crafting profession of your choice, between alchemy, accessory crafting, and smithing. And if you're playing in Reboot, you will actually be able to learn all five professions on a single character. Each profession has their own mastery level, and the more you work on it, the more mastery you'll have, eventually leading to an increase in the profession's level, which allows for more advanced crafting and harvesting. Let's start with the two harvesting professions, mining and herbalism. These two basic professions will allow you to mine veins and dig up herbs in order to smelt ores and create oils. The max level for these two professions is going to be level 10, and the success rate of harvesting will increase with each mastery level you go up. The herbs and oils that you create in these two basic professions will be needed in the three different crafting professions in the game. Each of the three professions do different things. Smithing will allow you to use ores that have been smelted to craft armors and weapons. Accessory crafting is very similar to smithing, but instead of armor and weapons, you specialize more in accessories like rings and shoulders, and alchemy will allow you to take oils that you create through herbalism and craft potions. These potions can range from simple HP and MP regen potions to more advanced potions that will buff up your stats. Each of these three professions have their own benefits, and it's extremely difficult to say that one is better than another, but no matter which one you choose, you will gain access to a couple of benefits, which include two abilities, extracting and fusing. Fusing will allow you to combine duplicates of an equip and re-roll for better stats. Extracting, on the other hand, will allow you to break down equipment for crystals that are sometimes used in high-level crafting, like cubes for example. Both of these will prove extremely useful as you play through the game. Extracting specifically will allow you to get rid of junk equips that you no longer need, and give you superior item crystals, which are part of the recipe for making Meister and Master Craftman cubes. It should also be noted that extracting and fusing will not affect your mastery, however, as you level up your crafting profession, you'll be able to extract and fuse higher level equipment. Speaking of crafting professions, let's talk about them. There are 12 different levels for crafting professions. You start with the normal level 1 through 10, but beyond level 10 is Master Craftman, and beyond that is Meister level. These two levels are where all three crafting professions shine in different ways. Smithers gain access to crafting cubes, accessory crafters will gain access to crafting flames, and alchemists gain access to crafting high level potions that are extremely useful for boosting your damage. Along with these powerful items that you will be able to craft, all three of these crafting professions also have some bonus skills or effects. Upon hitting Master Craftman with smithing, you will gain access to a new skill called Weapon Tempering. This skill will consume whetstones that you can craft, and will allow you to slightly increase your critical damage. And this skill also gets upgraded once you hit Meister rank. Master Craftman ranks for accessory crafters will also receive their own skill, however it's not as useful as the smithing one. And Alchemists, by default, will have a passive effect where they will be able to use two buff potions at once. All three of these professions are better than the other in one way or another, and I would go as far as to say that the most ideal is that you would want all three crafting professions available to you. For reboot players, this isn't an issue, however for non-reboot, many high-level players see themselves having multiple different characters for all three crafting professions. I personally have smithing on my main character, because critical damage is a super rare stat to come by. When it comes to any video game, there is always an efficient way to get things done, and MapleStory's profession system is no different. In this section of the video, I'm going to be taking a look at what I believe to be the most efficient way to get to Meister rank for all three crafting professions and how to maintain it. 
Arguably the hardest part of all three crafting professions will be the journey from Mastery 10 to Meister, as once you hit level 10, you will start losing 400 mastery per hour after 17 hours of not crafting anything. And it doesn't help that crafting items that are for Mastery 10 and above have cooldowns. You're going to get frustrated, especially if you're working on alchemy, and you might eventually want to give up, which is completely normal when playing Maple, but if you're committed enough, you eventually will push through. Oh. <laughs> Why did I have to do this? You'll want to stay organized and hoard as many items as you can carry, and if you see a rare flower or vein, harvest it and take everything. The last thing you want to have to do is head back into the field to grab some last minute materials. Do keep in mind that some of these crafting routes will require you to go out of your way to pick up specific materials. I'll be mentioning where to obtain these materials as we move along. As for all the herbs and ores you're going to use, you can find those in the portal in the bottom right of Ardent Mill. Smithing is definitely one of the more popular professions that many players pay attention to. Not only do you get access to crafting cubes, but you also get access to weapon tempering, which will increase your critical damage by a small amount temporarily. For mastery 1 all the way to 10, you're going to want to stick to crafting arrows. They are arguably the cheapest item to craft, and the mastery they give makes it an extremely cost-efficient way to level up. For mastery 1, 2, and 3, focus on crafting the quality arrows. For mastery 4 through 8, focus on crafting the strong arrows. And for mastery 8 and 9, you'll want to craft the sharp arrows. Once you reach Mastery 10, things get a little bit complicated. The most efficient way to get to Master Craftsman's is to focus on making the Timeless and Reverse Shoes. Everything you craft above Mastery 10 will not only have a cooldown, but it will also give more fatigue. So you want to try and craft items that will give a good amount of mastery while not being too expensive. Reverse Shoes might be a little bit too expensive to craft due to requiring pieces of time, but if you want to cut some corners, this is the way to do it. Once you reach Master Craftsman, you'll gain access to the level 1 variant of weapon tempering. You'll also gain access to crafting magic whetstones, which is going to be one of your main ways to get to Meister level. You can also craft a couple of Master Craftsman cubes along the way if you have a couple of cubic blades lying around. Once you finally reach Meister level, keeping it is super easy. Crafting a single whetstone per day is more than enough to maintain your mastery. Additionally, you can also craft one or two cubes per day to maintain your mastery. You may also consider Timeless and Reverse Shoes as an option if smithing is not on your main character like mine is but this does require you to be a little bit more strict with your mapling schedule as you will start losing mastery after 17 hours. Accessory crafting is a profession that was sometimes overlooked in the past, but when bonus stats and flames were introduced, this crafting profession became just as important as smithing. While the bonus skill you gain for getting to Master Craftsman and above is honestly not that great, you gain access to crafting extremely useful items like Meister Earrings, Meister Rings, Powerful Rebirth Flames, and Eternal Rebirth Flames. For level 1 through 6, you want to craft either Defense, Deadshot, or Swift Ring rank 1s. Just like with arrows for smithing, the recipe for these three rings are extremely cheap, making it the most efficient way to level up early. Unfortunately, the mastery you gain from crafting these rank 1 rings will go down with each time you level up. Once you reach mastery level 6, you have two options really. You can stick to crafting the original three rings, or you can craft two new rings, which are the nimble ring rank 3 and the deadshot ring rank 4. If you're working on your mining profession alongside your accessory crafting, making the two new rings isn't such a bad route. Anyways, whichever route you take, eventually you'll reach mastery level 10. Just like with smithing, you're going to want to pick up some advanced materials like black crystals and dark crystals. You're also going to want to hold on to any advanced and superior item crystals you get your hands on from extracting equipment. You have a couple of different items to choose from when it comes to making your way to Master Craftsman. If you're looking to cut some corners with your fatigue, you'll definitely want to look into the level 120 shoulders that you can craft. These do require you to go out of your way to pick up some seal skins from Aqua Road, but it's going to be the most efficient way to gain mastery. Another thing about crafting the shoulders is that you're going to need a good amount of rocks of time. If you unfortunately don't have a large amount of this item, you're going to have to go down a more tricky route. This crafting route consists of the Swift Dead Shot Ring Rank 2, the Rank 6 Stat Rings, and the Shiny Blue Face Accessories. These items give significantly less mastery than the shoulders do, and you'll overall have more fatigue. But the trade-off is that you won't need Need any rocks of time, which is worth it to some people. No matter which route you go, you will eventually reach Master Craftsman rank. You can craft power 
powerful rebirth flames and magic ember stones for a little bit of masteries, but outside of these two items, you can really only craft the Grey Meister symbols. But do keep in mind that part of the recipe for the Grey Meister symbol is to have the normal Grey symbol, something that is available to you at Mastery 5. Upon reaching Meister level, you're going to want to maintain your rank so that you can craft red and rainbow flames. You have a couple of different options when it comes to maintaining your Meister rank. If you're looking for something cheap material-wise, you can stick to crafting one or two Nimble Ring rank 4s every day, but you might need to be a little bit more strict with when you log in to make sure that you don't lose mastery. Alternatively, you could just craft the flames themselves, as they also give a really good amount. The third way for you to keep your mastery is to craft magic ember stones every day. However, for you reboot players specifically, I would actually not recommend crafting magic ember stones specifically. You'll be needing the materials to craft magic whetstones for weapon tempering anyways. Alchemy is highly regarded by the community as being one of the hardest professions to level, but in all honesty this only becomes true once you get to mastery level 10 at least. As a matter of fact, I worked on all three of these crafting professions and alchemy kept up quite easily. However, the journey from mastery 10 to meisters is where things really start to slow down. Luckily, maintaining your meister rank isn't that hard to do. From mastery 1 all the way to mastery 10, you're only going to want to stick to two different types of potions, defense potions and mana potions. But once you craft the potions, don't throw them away. For the defense potions, you have an option to convert these into advanced defense potions, but don't do it. This is a trap. What you're going to want to do is convert the potions that you craft into pills, which is going to cost you a little bit of mesos. Angelica, a merchant that you can find in Ardent Mill, sells a bunch of different recipes for pills. You're going to want to pick up the defense pill and mana pill recipes that she sells. The defense pills specifically are the ones that you're going to want to pay attention to. As you can see here, for each set of defense potions that I craft, you'll be able to craft 5 sets of defense pills, which is where you're going to be gaining a lot of mastery. This is the main reason as to why I was able to keep up with smithing and accessory crafting. Stick to the lowest ranked defense potion and mana potions until you hit mastery 6. Once you hit mastery 6, you're going to want to swap over to the rank 6 defense potions and mana potions, and remember to craft pills whenever possible. These will carry you over until you hit mastery 10. Now that you're Mastery 10, you'll have a couple of options to work with. The Defense Potion and Pills are still going to be a viable way to get Mastery, but the cooldown poses a time-consuming problem. If you're only crafting Defense Potion and Pills, you can see yourself being stuck as a Mastery 10 Alchemist for days. Along with crafting the Defense Potion and Pills, you're also going to want to consider crafting the Advanced Defense Potions, Health Potions, and Mana Potions, and also try to convert the Health Potions and Mana Potions into Pills. Additionally, if you have Magic Powder, you can also attempt to craft the Transformation Potions for a slight bit more Mastery. These potions will carry you over until you hit Master Craftman, which is where the real test begins. The journey from Master Craftman to Meister is extremely painful, there isn't really any cheap recipes that give a good amount of EXP. The best source of mastery is going to come from the boost potions that you will be able to craft, but the recipe for these boost potions is somewhat expensive, so don't be afraid to fall back on your mastery 10 potions if you need to. Additionally, if you get lucky with farming Von Leon every day, you may be able to pick up a wealth acquisition potion recipe or an EXP accumulation potion recipe. If you're going to use either of these recipes, you will have 24 hours to craft as many potions as you can. None of these give a significant amount of mastery, but as far as I've researched, this is the best it gets. Be warned though, you'll want to try and steer clear of crafting any material bags or extractors. Sure, they give a bunch of mastery, but the amount of fatigue required to craft them just does not make it worth it. Master Craftsman to Meister rank as an alchemist is hard, arguably harder than some of the other professions entirely, but once you get to Meister rank, you can maintain it by crafting one or two sets of rank 10 defense potion or pills every day. You may also consider crafting the cube or scroll extractor so that players will be able to extract flames and cubes for materials. Professions might be a little bit overwhelming to a lot of newcomers to the game, but regardless of this, it still remains as the heart of MapleStory's crafting system, and many players often refer to this place for upgrading gear and making mesos. Working on leveling up your mastery might feel like a big hassle, but regardless of this, professions still remain one of the easiest ways to get access to a surplus amount of enhancement items. But let's be honest, if you're not here for crafting a flame or a cube, you're probably here just for the MVP buff that's being casted on another channel. Channel. Oh, whoa. 
welcome back. All right, everybody, everybody, get ready to use Sonic Blow in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, 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 oh,